Hi everyone, I'm Miss Alex and welcome back to Library Road Trip. Today we are going to meet Dave Meyer, a local beekeeper here in Manuka. We are going to learn all about the history of Meyer Bees, his business, plus we're going to get an inside look to see what it takes to be a beekeeper. I can't wait. I met with Dave and he told me a little bit about his business and how he got into beekeeping. Oh, uh, hi, I'm uh, Dave Meyer with Meyer Bees. Uh, we're located here in uh, Manuka, Illinois. Um, we are uh, beekeepers ourselves, and then uh, we also run a, a beekeeping supply showroom uh, open to the public. Uh, we have, as you can see, various uh, beekeeping supplies, everything you need to get yourself up and running, um, including the bees. So um, it, we also have uh, parts for uh, honey uh, extraction, uh, bottling of honey, uh, just about everything you can imagine. So. Um, how did Meyer Bees get started? So uh, I uh, started looking into uh, beekeeping oh, probably 25 years ago. And at the time I lived in Joliet, um, but uh, the yard that we lived in uh, wasn't really um, the right layout for having bees. So just kind of always thought about it. And then about uh, 20 years ago, uh, we moved here to Manuka and uh, have a fair amount of acreage here and uh, the opportunity arose where I could actually you know do the beekeeping. Mm -hmm. So I um, started beekeeping uh, shortly after we moved here, probably been beekeeping about 16 years now and uh, started with a couple colonies and uh, took a lot of classes, read a lot of books um, and uh, got my feet wet essentially mm -hmm. and uh, started looking into queen rearing and uh, then that's sort of when things changed for us. Uh, we started raising uh, local queens uh, from our stock that survived from one year to the next. And um, uh, other beekeepers in the area caught word that uh, we had local queens available because it's always tough to find queens, you know, in a pinch where you need a queen now and you're trying to find online, you know, back 10, 15 years ago, the internet right. isn't what it is now. Yeah. <laughs> so we started having this regular flow of people coming to us purchasing queens and um, it seemed to happen a lot where they would come to purchase the queen and then they would say hey and I need a smoker or I need a, a hive tool or I need an extra box you know for my hive and at the time all we had was queens so we would have to tell everybody like I only have queens and we kept hearing that over and over and over wow. uh, so that got us thinking that hey you know maybe there's nobody in the area you know to supply all the additional parts that you need to do beekeeping right, you know, right. successfully uh, so we started carrying parts okay. and then that's kind of where we are now okay. uh, so some of the parts uh, you know, we actually fabricate right here on site with a wood oh, shop wow. um, so uh, some of the stuff is actually made you know right here okay so. what was your initial interest in beekeeping so just I think yeah I think it was originally um, probably just the, the the whole interaction of how the colony forms how it grows okay. And then the honey aspect the honey, of it, you know, yes. so you've got that byproduct, yeah. you know, that, uh, that excess honey that you can harvest right. and keep for yourself. Right. So. so I was curious to know, now that it's winter, what happens to the bees? So now that it's winter, what do the bees do? What, where are um, they hibernating? Do they... Sure, sure, yeah. So, they, so no, hiber no hibernation. Really. Oh, okay. Um, so the bees, uh, during the season, they... Um, they collect nectar and pollen to feed their baby bees, mm -hmm. but the excess nectar that they collect, they, they store away as honey. Okay. And um, the, uh, the idea is that uh, they need, uh, in the Chicagoland area here anyway, you need about 90 pounds of honey to feed the bees, okay. uh, to, for them to feed themselves, you know, throughout the winter time. Um, so that's what they do. So okay. uh, throughout that whole season, they stock 90 pounds of honey plus the extra honey beyond the 90 pounds yeah. is for us to take. Okay. Uh, but throughout the winter, they actually form a, a cluster and uh, they eat that honey throughout the whole winter. Oh, wow. So they're alive and well, they form a shell, okay. they keep themselves warm 70 degrees typically during the middle of winter. Wow. It could be uh, 10 degrees out, zero degrees out, it's yeah. 70 degrees and they slowly eat away at the honey to fuel themselves to generate heat. Interesting. And uh, if they run out of honey, then they, they unfortunately they die. Okay. So the whole goal is to make sure they have enough honey right. you know, throughout the winter. Right. Um, and if they run out of honey, you can supplemental feed them okay. to, to keep them going. Okay. You know, so that's one of our tasks during the winter time is we still check the colonies and uh, make sure that their honey stores are still good. And if they're running low, then we give them uh, uh, sugar, you know, okay. can, uh, candy boards, uh, winter feed uh, to make sure that they, they don't starve. Now let's take a little tour around the bee farm. So there's a couple of different uh, techniques we use here for uh, feeding the bees. Uh, this uh, photo that you see here, uh, we actually uh, open feed pollen um, 
uh, to uh, give the bees something to do. So, so late into the fall, there's really not much, not many flowers. There's not many, much nectar. There's not much pollen. And uh, with the number of bees we have here, they tend to become uh, what I call mischievous. They will bother each other and attempt to rob things from each other. So, so we actually uh, provide them uh, not only the pollen that you see there in the feeder, uh, we also provide them uh, sugar syrup. Uh, so that way they've got something to do during the, during the time of the year. This is a uh, picture of the uh, sugar syrup feeder. Uh, it's an open feeder. Um, basically, we take uh, sugar syrup, uh, place it into that big trough, and then uh, we float straw or hay on top, so that way the bees have uh, some place to stand and they don't drown. So then uh, okay. you know, the bees collect the sugar syrup from there, fly it back to their hive, and then just keep repeating that trip over and over throughout the whole day. So. This is a... Um, this is one of our uh, yards uh, that we have here right on site. Um, the typical setup is sort of our demonstration yard. Um, the uh, typical arrangement is, you know, a couple deep uh, brood boxes. That's where the bees live. And then um, uh, they're uh, shrunken down already at this point. We've removed the honey supers from the top. So they're, they're pretty much um, uh, set to go for the winter time and um, uh, not much activity. Um, but um, but uh, that's the typical setup that you would see for setting up a beehive. What we're looking at here is, uh, I mentioned earlier that we have a lot of hives. So um, the, those hives we saw earlier um, are sort of like our demonstration hives. Um, these hives that we're looking at right now are where we produce more bees. So we have uh, several hundred of these. Uh, colonies um, and the goal with these is just to make more bees. Uh, we also make queens uh, back in this area of the property and um, it's more of a bee oriented than honey oriented. We don't really make any honey back here. It's just for making bees. So. Very cool. um, where do you get your bees from? Uh, so we have uh, several hundred colonies ourselves and we do what are called splits. So we produce more bees from our own bees. Okay. Uh, so that, that's typically the process that we're going through and then we raise the queens here as well. Okay. Um, we do have some farms uh, out of state that we uh, that we have hives at as well, where we produce bees when it's uh, too cold here to do it. Okay. So early season, uh, we take trips down to uh, the Georgia area um, several times a month oh, to wow. produce more bees down there, and then bring okay. them up here for other other customers to purchase. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite part about beekeeping? Would you say? <laughs> uh, favorite part. So. Um, I think it's just that uh, you know you can see the the progression of the bees from one visit to the next, and there's just always this dynamic of you never know what's going to happen from from you know one hive to the to the to the to the following hive, um, and it's just a very changing process. Um, there's just so many things that the bees can do, um, and so many ways to manage them too. You know, so we're always adapting our techniques. You know, and it's all about the local area. You know, so the way we manage bees here. Is different than we would manage bees down in Georgia. Okay. So it's it's uh, it's definitely related to you know where your bees are at as to how you're going to manage them. So it's just that uh, you got to figure it out, yeah. and it's going to take us you know years to kind of fine tune everything, right. uh, because we're always tweaking little things, and and unfortunately, a small tweak it takes almost a whole season to figure out wow. if it made a difference. Okay. So then you tweak it a little more the following year, right. and then it takes another year to tweak it a little <laughs> more. So it's just like a never-ending process. Yeah. Yeah. So. Next, let's take a look at the process of making the honey that you eat. So this is a, um, uh, from the honey supers that we extracted this fall, uh, this is an, a sample frame of uh, what, a, what the honey would look like. So the bees have actually created everything you see in that picture there. That's uh, wax um, that they've drawn out and then they've uh, stored the nectar and then um, dried it down to the point to where it becomes honey. And then the, the white part on the top there that you see is uh, cappings. So that is also wax and it seals the honey inside the frame and uh, it can be stored for long periods of time in that, in that format. Um, but uh, to make the honey uh, in the jars that you typically would see, uh, you have to remove that capping from the top and then uh, extract the honey using either a, uh, a manual process where you spin the frames and it flings the honey out from the frames um, or, a, or a machine that you can put the honey frames into that then uh, does the process of removing the honey. This is a um, uh, we have the uh, automated method, the mechanical process, where it actually removes the, the cappings 
and this is uh, the capping tank that all the, the wax cappings from the frames uh, get placed into um, as the frames are processed. This is a frame that has had the uh, cappings removed and uh, what should be in those cells would be uh, raw honey. And then uh, when we do the extracting process where we spin the frames in the machine that uh, flings the honey out of those frames so that we can bottle it up. This is a uh, uh, honey tank, a storage tank, so it's uh, like a settling tank. So we basically, uh, when we extract that honey, we uh, pour it into the top of this tank. It has a set of screens which filter out all the wax particles. Uh, there's sometimes bee parts that remain in that honey, you know, unfortunately. Um, but um, that screen removes all those particles. And then uh, in that tank, it kind of settles out, and we're able to pull the clean honey, the pure honey, right out the bottom of the tank. We're looking. Right. We have some questions from our kids, our patrons. So okay. our first one is, do you get stung a lot? Um, you, so, so, you know, you've got the protective gear, yes. uh, which, which I would recommend, you know, for new beekeepers to wear the protective gear. But um, uh, it does make you a little clumsy, let's just okay. say. So when you have the gloves on, you're a little clumsy. And um, you tend to, um, you could be crushing bees and not even know it because okay. you can't feel what you're doing. So I prefer to work beehives barehanded. Okay. So that way I can feel where the bees are, I know that I'm not crushing bees. Yeah. And uh, honestly, you know, the bees don't really, um, don't really interact too much with us as beekeepers um, unless we make mistakes. Okay. Then they realize that we're there and then that's when you get a reaction out of them. And usually if you're going to get stung, it's because you've crushed a bee accidentally. Okay. Um, or you've, uh, you're putting a frame down on top of a bee and your finger's in the wrong spot, you okay. get stung that way. Uh, sometimes you may have a stray bee on your jacket yeah. and you're done with the bees for the day, you're uh, putting your suit away and you get stung. Oh, then, no. <laughs> you know, so that's typically when you get stung is it's just an okay. accident. Okay. So. Um, what is the purpose of the queen bee? I know you were talking about the queen bee a little sure, bit sure. earlier, yeah. so what is her Sure, role? so the queen, um, the, the worker bees, so there's, there's three, you know, uh, castes. You know, you've got drones, which are the male bees. Okay. You've got worker bees, which are all female. Okay. Uh, they pretty much run the whole colony as far as uh, foraging goes, cleaning the hive out goes, uh, taking care of the baby bees, um, producing the uh, wax, um, uh, also for producing the honey. Okay. So, um, and then you've got the queen. So the queen is the uh, single bee in the colony that um, produces all those worker bees. Okay. Um, and uh, it's up to her to be fed properly by the workers. So as long as she's being fed properly and being taken care of mm -hmm. by the workers, then her goal is just to lay as many eggs as she okay. can and produce more bees. Okay. So is it true that the bees will all follow her where she goes? I've seen that in movies. Yeah. A lot, yeah. So. She gives off a pheromone. Okay. So it's very important that the uh, the queen's pheromone spreads amongst all the bees in the colony. Mm -hmm. um, if her pheromone is uh, missing, mm -hmm. then they assume that the queen is gone and then they'll okay. produce another queen. Okay. So that's why, you know, there's always bees following her around, okay. then it's by touch. They have to touch her to pick up that pheromone and then transmit it amongst themselves. Right. Okay. So that way they know she's there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, stop a second. Wasn't that so cool to see? Now, let's read a book about a honeybee. Are you a bee? by Julie Allen and Tudor Humphreys. Are you a bee? Perhaps you are a honeybee. If so, your mother is a queen. She looks like this and she lays eggs. Your life began inside of one of her eggs. When you hatch, you are not a pretty sight. You are a larva. You are in a small room with six walls. It's called a cell. Your older sisters bring food. Eat it and grow. Grow until you fill your cell. One of your older sisters puts a wax ceiling on your cell. Inside your closed cell, you change a lot. When you are ready, chew a hole in the ceiling and climb out. Now you look like a bee. You have a hairy body with stripes, six legs, and four wings. You have two feelers on your head. You have a stinger. You are not alone. You have a few hundred brothers and thousands of sisters. You live in a nest built by your older sisters. Your nest might be in a hollow tree. It might hang down from a tree branch. 
most likely it will still be inside a hive. Your brothers are drones. They don't do much. You and your sisters are workers. You do everything. You clean the nest, feed the larva, take care of the queen, and build new cells. You fan the nest with your wings to cool it in the summer. You guard the nest to keep out strange bees. Busy, busy, busy. Leave the nest to fetch flowers. Leave the nest to fetch food from flowers. How will you know where to look? Your sisters will make up a dance to tell you. Watch the dance carefully. Don't worry, you'll understand it. You're a bee. There is a sweet liquid in flowers. It's called nectar and it's hidden deep inside. This is not a problem. You have a long tongue. You can reach it. You also have a special stomach to carry it in. You'll get pollen dust all over you. Scrape it off with your front legs and put it in the pollen baskets on your back legs. When you get home, your sisters will help you put the nectar and the pollen into storage cells. Mix some of the nectar with pollen to make bee bread. Leave the rest of the nectar to turn into honey. Bee bread is so good to eat. So is honey. If you find a new patch of flowers, be sure to tell your sisters. How? Dance, of course. More eggs hatch. More larva turns into bees. The nest gets very crowded. What will happen next? The old queen, your mother, leaves. She takes you and a lot of your sisters with her. Deep in the nest, a royal larva is hatching. She is in a different kind of cell, and she is fed rich food called royal jelly. When she becomes a bee, she is a young queen. She flies away and mates with drones from another nest so that she can lay eggs. When she flies home again, she will be the new queen. Fly with your sisters. Follow the old queen. Stay together. You are part of a swarm. When the queen stops, swarm around her. Now you must build a new nest, but where? Maybe the queen will send scout bees to find a good place. Or maybe a beekeeper will find you and take you all to an empty hive. Why is the beekeeper dressed like this? In case you get flustered and try to sting. However, if your mother looks a little like this, or this, or this, you are not a bee. You are a human child. You do not have a hairy body with stripes on it. You do not have a long tongue. You do not have a stinger. It's very unlikely that you have hundreds of brothers and thousands of sisters. But you can do a lot of things that a bee can't do. You can still eat bread and honey, but you'll never have to fetch your food from flowers. Best of all, you don't have to be busy, busy, busy all day long. Did you know bees are happy to live in a hive because the beekeeper has already built a part of the nest for them. If bees live in a hollow tree, they have to build the whole nest themselves. A worker bee can only sting once and then it dies but a queen bee can sting many times. Bees carry pollen from flower to flower on their furry bodies. The pollen from one flower rubs off onto others and makes seeds, which will grow into new plants. The average worker bee makes one and a half teaspoons of honey in her lifetime. The end. I loved reading that book with you. Now, let's go take a look around the store. Dave's store has so many great things, both regular and flavored honey, empty jars for honey storage, and a huge selection of books all about beekeeping. Look at how many there are. 
They also have cute mugs and other bee decor for the house. They sell lotions, soaps, and chapsticks too. Look at all of the cute bee stuff. They also sell everything you need to keep bees. This includes bee food, feeders, different items to help you manage and house the bees, suits, and more. They offer a wide variety of items because, as Dave told me, there is no one right way to keep bees. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's library road trip. I hope to see you next week, same place, same time. Bye.